All right, we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to keep their reports and petitions and whatnot short uh, to the point because we're going to get through this. Um, Reeves is not here today, so I think he gave either Pre or Stephen his report. Do one of y'all have his, have his report? Yep, I have a summary. I'm just going to read it. Um, so Reeves said, hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Apologies for not being able to make it tonight. I was in our board of trustees meeting all day and just received a research project for my campaign internship that is due tomorrow. So I'm scrambling to finish it this evening. Just a quick update. Today, we voted 12 to 1 to approve the guidelines on beginning to rename campus buildings, which will, which will be put on the UNC website in the next couple of days. I anticipate a special Board of Trustees meeting in the next couple of weeks to rename some buildings, which needs to continue to happen soon. Hope you are all doing well. Perfect. Anybody have any questions for Pre? Um, about Reeves' updates. About Reeves' updates, yeah. All right, seeing none, we're gonna move on. Um, Pre, what are, you, what are your updates? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so first of all, I wanna thank you for making this emergency Senate meeting. Um, one of the bills that will be on the that we're going to be voting on has to do with some of the hardship parking changes um, that we need to make in light of changes to transportation and parkings policies for this upcoming semester. So really excited to jump into that discussion. Um, other big updates: we met with the student advising to the student advisory committee to the chancellor last week, um, conveying some of the questions that had been compiled from the last provost meeting. Um, which have been now given to the implementation committee for the roadmap and hopefully we will get some answers on that as well as the implement implementation committee taking into account those concerns. Um, the, I think the last cycle of external appointments is going to be starting in the next week to two weeks. So excited to see who else we will end up recruiting onto all the different external appointments. I think that's pretty much it for me though. Sounds good. Any questions for Pri? Again, I'm going to be using the raise hand feature on the right. All right, seeing none, moving on to Stephen. Any reports for us? Any, any comments? Yeah, just real brief. Uh, we are re gonna, we're going to be restarting our weekly to biweekly meetings with Vice Chancellor of Finance and Operations Pruitt over the next few weeks. I think we're looking at July 25th to 30th for our first meeting back with him after a, per time, after a period of time off. Um, Reeves, Ryan, Jacob, and I will be meeting in the next few days to discuss the state of emergency that student government is still technically in um, and whether we should begin to phase that out as we move into the new normal of the fall um, or how we can rework it um, to continue the state of emergency if it is found necessary. Um, other than that, I think we're also moving forward on some budgetary asks and all for the executive branch as we move towards the fall adjusting for the lack of in-person events that is likely going to be the case um, as well as potential other and alternative um, programming that we're, we can look at in the fall so things are moving on the finance end but it's still kind of slow um, oh one more thing we are going to be looking at SFAC on um, the student fee audit committee and starting that up within the next few weeks um, and Jacob and I will be getting more to that on the members of SVAC soon. Great, thank you. Any questions for Stephen? All right, seeing none. Um, the AG is not here, Honor Court Chair is not here. Uh, Bobby, do you have anything to, to let us know about? No, thank you. Sounds good. Um, we have no papers, so I'm going to move on to the reports of the officers. Drew is not here, um, so we're going to move on down. Oh, Elena's also not here today. Um, Baxter, do you have a report for us? Uh, I don't have anything specific to R&J, and I'm sure Acacia will cover anything that leadership as a whole is doing. Uh, but I do want to say that as we move into the fall semester, senators, please reach out to me if you have any questions about writing bills or uh, addressing anything as a Senate. I'm, I'm happy to work with you and looking forward to a productive semester as a Senate. Yep, Baxter is a great resource for that, guys. So if you ever need any help, let them know. Um, anybody else on the leadership council help you on that stuff too? Um, all right, moving on to Ashna. You got a report for us? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you're staying safe and, safe and well. Um, I just wanted to update a little bit. Uh, we're aiming to have the treasurer's test out by August 1st as a hard and fast deadline. 
And once it's out, all senators will have to take it so that we can vote on funding bills later on. Um, the funding process will then start pretty soon after that since classes start earlier this year. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything else. Um, just want to repeat what Baxter said. Don't be afraid to come to me with questions, honestly. Would love to help you guys out. Awesome, sounds good. Um, moving on to Maya, you have a report for us? Yes, hey everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, just first off, this week we started out with a brief meeting um, with, well, this is not connected to my role as speaker pro tempore, but uh, did for leadership, we uh, met with uh, the chancellor in regards to including equity and, um, you know, serving as uh, the best resource for marginalized communities with in regards to uh, the Carolina Roadmap. So a few uh, senators were present at that meeting and um, it was very informative and a very needed discussion. And after this meeting, I actually will be jumping off a, a little bit early because we have a commission meeting, um, the newly formed commission. Um, so we'll be meeting tonight in regards to just how we're doing right now with a fall, fall semester coming up, planning to see how we can best serve the communities um, that are going to be impacted the most. Uh, by not returning to campus. So that's pretty much what I've been doing on my end. I'm really meeting with people and finding out what I can be a resource to. So I'm here if you need me or if you just want to have a conversation about fall or anything, just let me know. Beautiful. Thanks, Maya. Um, any questions for Maya? All right, seeing none, I'm going to move on to my report. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Senate. I'm going to keep this as short as I can. Um, so the reason we're meeting today is because we have a couple bills on the calendar. The first is for hardship parking. Um, we're going to explain more uh, once we get to that bill about why we're meeting about it. Um, that was the first situation. Second situation is um, Alyssa Floyd, the State External Affairs Director, recently resigned from her position. Um, and so the code is not like doesn't really give us a process for how to nominate a new person to that position. So we had to like outline that process really quick. Um, so those are the two things that we'll be hearing today. Um, I want to welcome our new staff members. Um, we closed the applications on June 26th and then accepted them all a couple weeks ago. Um, and so Alex and Julie will be our two new PR managers. Um, I think Julie's on the call. Yeah, there she is. Um, I don't think Alex is on the call here today though. Um, Emma's gonna be our new parliamentarian. Um, Jordan is gonna be our new DNI coordinator. Um, and Yasharth, Tyler, and Suyan. Um, Yasharth and Suyan couldn't make it today, but they will be our legislative assistants. Um, or three of our legislative assistants. Sharth will be my assistant, Tyler will be for o and and Suyan will be for finance. Um, so we're gonna reopen the application in the in the fall in August to get LAs for Maya, RMJ, and Ethics, as well as just like extra LAs to like beef up each team so that we have like more, um, more resources at our availability and to fill in the webmaster slash clerk positions if possible. Um, if we can't fill in those positions, we'll probably just work with the LAs to um, help get that, that job covered without needing like a specific position for it. Um, but welcome everyone. Um, I hope you find it as fulfilling as we all do. Um, I'm looking forward to the semester. Um, and congratulations, by the way. Um, so yeah. Uh, next up, uh, on the topic of new staff and people, Reeves and I are going to schedule a special election in August. Date to come soon on that. We're still like reaching out to the DOE and stuff. So please tell your friends to run or to apply to staff if um, they're interested in Senate work. Um, we're also releasing, we're also working on those explainer videos that I promised um, earlier in the summer, like on like certain topics that you all like, might be confused about or like, want to know more about. Um, leadership has signed up for like certain topics that we all like want to like make videos on. Um, and we'll be releasing those to the Senate YouTube playlist as soon as we can. So just bear tight on those. Um, if you do have topics that you'd like to see explained, uh, I'll make a thread in the Slack channel and like the general channel. And you all can reply to that message with like topics that you'd like to see explained. Uh, we'll make videos on them for you. Um, our retreat will be happening on July 31st. I'll release the time as soon as I can. Um, I was waiting on senior advisor DJ to get back to us so that he can administer the training, but his award schedule hasn't been finalized yet. And so it'll either be he administers it for us or he pre-records it and leadership will, will give the training that he pre-records for us. Um, and we'll send him any questions that you all have after the fact. Um, so the first half of it will be like games and iceberg and stuff and the second half will be the training. Um, next up, please fill out that form that I sent out in the email and the Slack. Um, we need to get the information on your all, but on like everyone's availability for the fall so that we can plan the days and times of our meetings as well as whether or not they'll be in person or remote or a hybrid option. Um, it's looking 
most likely to be remote as of right now, just because this is the most accessible option, it's the safest. Um, but in the event that we are able to find rooms that are big enough, um, we might explore uh, with the proper guidelines and everything, having like hybrid, hybrid meetings on campus um, for certain committees. Um, there's also a when to meet in that form, so make sure you fill that, up, that one up too. Um, yeah, that's all that I have. We are going to now hop into, or let me go back to the agenda. Yeah, there's, is anyone here for public comment? All right, seeing no one, we're now going to hop into the first bill. Um, and so this is the bill on hardship parking. Um, give me one second, let me share my screen. All right, um, I'm going to motion to allow pre-speaking privileges so that she can present this bill for me because she knows more about the process. Um, if you all could give me a red check marker, red or a green check marker, a red X, if you'd like to pass the motion or not. Let me check here, there we go. All right, yeah, this is majority. All right, Pri, take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, so this is a bill that me, Keisha, um, Kat, who I think is also on this call, and Michelle have been working on to make some changes to how hardship parking currently works and also add some emergency provisions in light of the recent legislation changes that have gone on from transportation, from transportation and, um, and parking. Um, I'll give you a little background on what some of those changes look like. So traditionally, hardship um, transportation and parking provides year-long permits for parking. Um, because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, they've moved to semester permits, which kind of changes how hardship operates traditionally. Um, so usually hardship has to hold on to a certain number of spots in the fall for the spring period, but we've been directed to actually give out all spots if we if if we're able to which will end up limiting our ability to hear appeals if as a result of that so that's part of what we're going to be discussing here also because of the unique hardships that have arisen as a result of covid the covid 19 pandemic um we've had discussions with transportation and parking and they're expecting a significant increase in the number of applications that we're going to be expected to read in a much shorter period of time so They've estimated, we usually get about 500 applications in the fall. They're expecting upwards of 1,000 this time. Um, this is also in light of us only having one week to read hardship parking applications when we usually have two weeks. Um, and those two weeks are actually usually once we come back to school and school starts. This year, we made a special effort to make sure that all students who are applying for hardship get their permits by August 1st so that they can have parking by the time they come back to campus. So kind of given all these factors, we've um, created a number of changes that I can walk through right now. Keisha, would you mind scrolling through the top of, to the top of the document? Um, yeah, so the first change we're making is to Article 2, Section 520. This, this first part, we were just removing the parts of this that refer to the members being the, determined by the executive and legislative branches because joint code um, has is the one that decides the membership of the hardship parking committee and because of changes to the external appointment code that we made a few months ago c wouldn't c doesn't apply anymore um again that's up to the joint governance council article 3 section 532 powers of the hardship parking committee leadership this is just to allow hardship parking to make changes when the department of parking and transportation makes changes to the timeline. And it also allows both the graduate students and the undergraduate students to appoint an additional two members, bringing up the total committee size to about 12 people instead of having eight, which is going to be a significant help if we are going to be getting the number of applications we're expecting that week. And then the last part has to do with something called medical non-mobility. Medical non-mobility is, is through the ARS office, and it is a service in which if you have 
um, a medical issue that does not impact your mobility. For example, you need to attend doctor's appointments or um, you might be immunocompromised in the case of COVID and you need a parking spot to limit your exposure to others. All of those are examples of medical non-mobility. The issue here though is that in the joint code right now, it says that medical non-mobility is something that hardship parking takes care of, but historically, hardship parking doesn't actually do medical non-mobility. That's given to ARS and ADA because we're not supposed to be seeing things that, we're not supposed to be really reviewing medical information. We're not necessarily qualified to be reviewing medical information. So we're striking that out of the joint, um, the joint code and through this bill, we're taking it out just to make sure that the processes are aligned with what is currently in the code. And then the last part of this is just talking about the first year undergraduate student policy. So again, because of COVID-19, a significant number of first years have, have been given waivers by Carolina Housing to commute to campus and live off campus. Um, historically, first years can actually get hardship parking application or hardship parking spots qualify to apply to hardship parking if they've been given that first year um, housing contract waiver. So we just wanted to clarify what sort of documentation a first year needs in order to apply for hardship parking and once again to remove the medical non-mobility component um, for the first year undergraduates because we don't see that. So that's sort of all of the changes we're making. I'm more than happy to discuss any of these changes. And Keshav, I also know we wanted to talk sort of potentially through how the grading of hardship parking works, be correct? That'll be later, that's not, that's not on this bill. That's not on this bill, but that's a future conversation we can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thanks, Bree. Um, are there any questions for Bree? You guys have raised hand future. Um, I'll also consider any motions on this bill. Um, a motion for discussion, a motion for the previous question. Whichever one it may be. If nobody has any questions, I motion the previous question. All right, there's been a motion for the previous question. Um, are there any objections before we move into voting procedure? If there are, just use the red X feature on the right. Would anyone like to continue to question for your move into discussion? All right, seeing no objections, um, we are now in voting procedure. So if everyone can vote on this bill in the usual manner by using either, using either a green check mark or a red X, that would be fantastic. Um, all right. Give me one second while I record the votes. All right. With the unanimous vote, that bill passes. Oh, Sally left the meeting. No, she's back. Let me refer to connect to audio. Sally, how would you like to vote on this bill? Would you mind popping it in the in the participants section on the right? All right, there we go. Sorry, I got kicked out for a second. You're good. No worries. All right. Um, well, I want to tell you. Okay, that that bill passes. Beautiful. Now moving on to um, USB one or two twenty four, a bill to formalize the nomination process for vacant EBO positions. Uh, Ashna, you might walk us through this one. Yeah, no problem. Um, so basically, since the SEA director resigned. I have been talking to Danny Bowen, the chief of staff, um, and essentially the section 210 in the code outlines some positions and what to do in case of vacancies, but it doesn't outline for every EBO position. 
Um, so we went in and kind of just added those positions on how to like determine how long um, the SVP has to nominate and establishing a nominating process for all EVO positions in general. Um, and then we also went in and added the two thirds majority vote of undergraduate Senate for actually approving those nominations. Um, other than that, it's not really anything new. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Ashna or myself? Go ahead and use the raise hand feature on the right. Yeah, Baxter. I uh, move to end question and answer. All right, there's been a motion to end the question and answering period. Um, is there any objection? So ending this Q&A period is going to move us into voting procedure. Um, to discussion. Oh, to discussion, sorry, sorry. Is there any objection to that motion? All right, seeing none, we're now in discussion. Would anyone like to speak about the bill? Or does anyone have any, have any questions about the bill? Yeah, is there a motion to extend free speaking privileges? A motion to extend <clears throat> speaking privileges to free. All right, can everyone vote yes or no and decide to extend free speaking privileges? All right, beautiful. Pre, go ahead. Yeah, um, I just had a clarifying question. So, so the, I understand that this this bill is saying that the undergraduate um, president nominates the replacement. I know, Ashna, that there had been some discussions about there potentially being a committee, um, sort of how EBO positions are originally chosen. Is, would, is that something that the undergraduate vice president, uh, undergraduate president still has the ability to kind of bring together a standing committee um, to nominate a replacement or kind of how much, how much does it limit the president's ability to do that if that is something that is considered? So just going by the wording of the code and like just adding these positions now, um, it just outlines that the SBP nominates Baxter can like correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's any specific process on like how he has to nominate or like his own kind of checklist on how he does it. Yeah, back down to the setting. that's the way I interpret it as well. Yeah, it, it kind of leaves it open to Reeves for him to do it however he sees fit. Um, Danny did mention that he was like thinking about a selection committee. I believe that's what you mentioned as well. Um, but it's been in the code that it's really just you know, the SVP nominates and that's kind of an open wording in itself and we don't want to be too like specific about it. No, absolutely. I appreciate you clarifying that because I, I just wanted to make sure that I understood what the limitations are, but it sounds like it's that's open to the president to decide. So thank you for answering that question. I have to go ahead. Yeah, we just wanted to bring this in line with the rest of the, um, the positions like the VP or the secretary or the treasurer uh so that there was the same process for these other e evo positions uh, and i agree with asha's interpretation about about a committee yeah i agree with that as well um asha real quick i'm going to make a motion to amend this to add an enacting clause um and the clause i want to add is um i know danny had some concerns about um being given a month to nominate a new appointee um and so i want to amend this to add a clause that says that um, they have a month upon passage of this bill. Is that is that friendly or unfriendly? I deem it friendly. Sounds good. Um, yeah, put in the proper formatting.
nominate How's that wording? I think I'm gonna take that out. Okay. Next trash one, does that wording look good? Looks good to me. Sounds good. Okay. Um are there any other questions or comments that people would like to make? If not, I'll also entertain motions. Yeah, Baxter, go ahead. I move to the previous question. All right, there's been a motion for the previous question. Um, are there any objections? All right, seeing no objections, we're now in voting procedure. If everyone could please um, vote on the right-hand side using the features provided by Zoom so kindly. Record all these votes. My left, right? Yeah. Okay. Call me as well. All right. So that bill also passes with a vote of eleven to zero. Um. All right. Sounds good. So both those bills have passed, and that is the last item we have on the agenda. Um. Last notices and announcements. Please make sure that you fill out the form that was sent out in the email um, and put in the Slack. There's a one to me that also goes along with that form. Um, both of those will be due by tomorrow at noon um, so that we have all the pertinent data. Um, thank you all for coming. I um, really appreciate it. Um, and if anyone wants to like, I'm personally planning on hold, like holding like a little Zoom call tomorrow, like, like an informal like get together for senators and stuff. And so if y'all are down to, to meet and like just chill over like, a, like dinner or lunch or like coffee or something, um, I'll drop it in the random Slack. Um, so yeah, sounds good. Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? Second. Oh, I forgot to call seconds this meeting. Oops. Um, I'm gonna do this by just because it's bad. Actually, no. Everyone, drop in the the participants a yes or a no on the motion to adjourn. Jack, you don't want to adjourn? Wrong button. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. All right, uh, with a vote of 11 to zero, we are now adjourned. Thank you all um, and have a good evening.